Welcome to Car Show Television. Hey guys, welcome to the Hooters in Fort Lauderdale for the Hooters and Horsepower Car Show, the first Sunday of every month. Hi, yeah, my name is John Zalinga, uh, American Speedwear CEO and owner. Uh, we put on the show here at Hooters of Fort Lauderdale called Hooters in Horsepower. It's a monthly event that we put on uh, basically to unite all the different diversities of cars that are out there, both uh, domestic and imports. Uh, it's a free registration car show. We do it the first Sunday of every month. Um, we basically, what we do is uh, it's an open show, free registration. The Hooters girls, they walk around, they pick their top choice. Uh, they pick their top four favorite cars, they have a best of show, and then your first three runner-ups. Like I said, it's a free registration, open to everything, and we're here from 12 to 4.30 at Hooters of Fort Lauderdale. How's it going, guys? My name is Greg from Wellington, Florida. I got a 2008 Shelby GT500 convertible. It's a red stripe package with the red Cobra badges. The car is one of 131 made in the US in the entire world in 2008. It's a beautiful car to drive. It's real fast, 540 horsepower. I'm enjoying it, enjoying the Shelby experience, enjoying the Hooters car show. Bought this car because I was always a Shelby fanatic. And when they came out with the new body design for the Shelbys in 2007, I lined up to get one. It took several months to get it, and um, I'm living the dream with the car. So what we got going on? Diffworks is dipping actually some purple rims that are stocks. If you look at this white cobalt here, we have green or purple dip on it along with a white dip car. My name is Eric Crompton. I'm a deputy sheriff for the sheriff's office in Broward County. I do a Beat the Heat program. The program actually originated in Jacksonville, but now the main office is out of Texas. What it Beat the Heat is, is it's, it's policemen and firemen that drag race. We try to get kids to go and race at the track instead of racing on the street. Uh, tracks like Palm Beach International, County Line Dragway. They put on events where they race kids. Uh, we bracket race kids, and what we do is they beat us. They get a shirt that says, I Beat the Heat. We actually have our uh, world finals in August in Ohio this year, and uh, I'm hoping to make a good show in, uh, in Ohio. But uh, it's a really good program. We go to schools, we talk to kids, we talk to a lot of kids in high schools. Obviously, we're not going to stop everyone from street racing, but if it saves one kid, it's definitely worth it. Uh, for my personal program, they go on Facebook, uh, Beat the Heat, Broward Chapter. You can go online to the national chapter, which is Beat the Heat Incorporated Racing. Uh, gives you all kind of information about what Beat the Heat is, uh, all the uh, programs that are out there, what be, uh, what we're involved in. Uh, and the good thing is, too, anything that any company wants to get involved with, whether it's car involved or not car involved, it's a tax write-off for those companies, and it gives them a really good exposure nationally and locally for those companies. Eric Bentley. I'm from Lashway Motorsports. I'm one of the owners. Uh, we're here today at the Hooters car meet. 
Um, we brought out uh, a couple of cars actually. Uh, one in particular is our 2007 Corvette Z06. Uh, we bought this car about a year ago um, from a gentleman in North Carolina with 77,000 miles on it. Uh, we did that because it was affordable. Truthfully, these cars are really out of our price range, but uh, we were able to get this one aff affordably and uh, right away started modding it. Um, you know, started with the with the engine, uh, aftermarket set of cylinder heads, aftermarket camshaft, uh, long tube headers. I mean, just about everything you can do to this car, minus a supercharger or a turbocharger. We wanted to keep, we wanted to keep the engine, you know, just a motor setup, 427. Um, once we did the power and the tuning and stuff like that, we went on into the uh, to the cosmetics of the car. Um, we enlisted the help of Superior Automotive Design for the wrap. That's a matte blue metallic finish made by 3M. Uh, the car is actually black, so if you look at it, you would know it, but it's black underneath. Uh, the matte blue metallic fits the car really well. We moved on then to the carbon fiber accents, added a carbon fiber splitter. Um, as you can see, well, we've run into a few items with the splitter. You know, unfortunately that happens when you have these cars and they're that low to the ground. But the beauty of the cars that we build is that they're built for daily driving use. They're not the type of car you're going to take it in a trailer and, you know, never never sees a lot of day. I drive this car every day to work. If I hit something, if I hit a bump or, you know, scrape the underneath, that's just the way it goes. But uh, that's the beauty of owning these cars and building these cars is it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun. We enjoy it and we're lucky enough to do it for a living. So uh, we did add a nitrous oxide system in this car from Nitrous Express. It's a, uh, it utilizes a 102 millimeter plate. It's a wet shot, so that means fuel and nitrous are both delivered to the intake manifold when it activates. Uh, we have a custom-mounted bottle in the trunk. It's carbon. It's a carbon composite bottle. It's 12-pound uh, capacity. Empty, it weighs seven pounds. Full, it weighs about 20, about five pounds less than a standard steel bottle. Uh, we went with aftermarket bottle brackets. Really, everything in this car is, is you know, uh, as high end as we could get. The nitrous system also utilizes a standalone fuel system from a nitrous outlet. It's a gallon cell, it holds uh, 116 octane race fuel, so when the nitrous is activated, it actually sprays race fuel as well as the 93 that's in the tank. It makes it really stable, it uh, allows us to run a little bit more timing, uh, allows us to uh, utilize the nitrous a lot safely, a lot safer. Uh, best quarter mile in this car is a 10.0 at 140. Um, we're making a few changes to it right now, shooting for the nines. It's a six-speed car. We're shifting it all the way down the track. This is not an automatic. I'm not just stepping on the gas. Um, you know, cutting a good 60-foot in this car is difficult, so we're working on the suspension as well. Um, zero to 60, I, I would estimate to be somewhere in probably low four seconds, high three seconds. It's extremely quick. There's no doubt about that. Lashway Motorsports, actually Josh and I started Lashway in 2010. Now, he and I both worked at other shops through uh, you know, throughout the area when we were going to school. And we noticed, uh, we noticed that there was a void in the market for not only a shop that knew what they were doing and, and just that level of professionalism, but also that just treated their customers the way that we would want to be treated. Uh, we're car guys, and when we opened the shop, we promised ourselves that we would be built around customer service. Go in the extra mile. If it means staying at midnight to help a guy out, if it means going out on a Sunday to help a guy on the side of the road with a flat tire or a belt that came off or whatever, that's what we were going to do. You know, it's it's just it's a it's a labor of love. It's not easy, but we're very blessed to be able to do it. So. My name is Dave Carey from Green Acres, Florida. I have a 69 Indy Pace car. If this particular car is one of 10 produced, how many of those 10 are left, I'm not really sure. In 69, what happened is they're very big on image branding. If you wanted a Pace car with air conditioning, it was mandatory automatic transmission. If you wanted a four speed, you couldn't get AC. Well, the only, I bought this car off the original owner and he bought it for his daughter in 69 as a graduation present and he insisted on AC and GM said no at the time and he said no I have to have it and I want the four speed and he eventually got it. Uh, it's all numbers matching from stem to stern 
Um, I spent about two and a half years restoring it. Uh, it was a basket case when I got it, and it's got 42,000 original miles on it. Sitting for 25 years in a barn when I found it, and I basically took the whole car, every single nut, bolt, and washer, including the interior, all the uh, material I took off of it, the seat cushions, I sandblasted the frames, and painted them, put it all back together again, and the, like I said, what is finding original parts of this is very, very difficult. You can buy lots, you could build a car like this just from restoration parts, but they're nowhere near the quality of an original part. There was a limited production of actual, what they call track day cars. This is not a track day car. It's this one that was sold to the general public and the dealerships. There's about, I'm not sure the exact number, I think there's about 3,000 of them made, and there's about uh, 40 or 50 track day cars. And like I said, those ones actually went on the Indy 500 and paced the tracks. This one is actually sold right here in Florida. This car has never been out of Florida. I love the Camaro because, I mean, it's an iconic car. I mean, if you take look at all the Camaros, everybody's personal favorite seems to be the 69 Camaro. And when I found this car, I had to have it.